recording in progress good morning all of you in today's session we are going to start with the 10th standard chemistry and physics unit 9 electrical current series number 6 is going to be discussed in the earlier classes we started with the what is meant by electrical current how it will be passing through the conducting material and how battery will be the source of power and uh, what kind of activities we can perform in order to illuminate the bulb in addition to that one so potential difference electromotive force how it will be calculated entire detailed uh, explanation was available on the channel called world of competitive chemistry in addition to all these we already completed the complete uh, explanation regarding unit 1 to unit 8 of this uh, 10th class chemistry all detailed explanation available on the channel called world of competitive chemistry right so uh, let us enter into our today session series number 6 here we are going to perform the science lab activity lab activity is going to be performed now so here what will be the aim of this uh, activity we are going to perform to show that ratio of this v nothing but potential difference by i is a constant for a given conductor right so this is the experiment we are going to perform by using the scientific perception called the ohms law in order to find out the ratio between v by i always taken as a constant that is denoted as a ohms law right here it is uh, it is clearly mentioned what is ohms law v is equal to i into r so that is clearly given as r is equal to v by i which is called a ohms law in order to predict this kind of relation here the materials required are five dry cells of 1.5 volts each we are taking five dry cells One, two, three, four, five dry cells were taken in a series, and each cell consisting one point five volts of current. And the conducting wire is required. That may be any metal wire like a silver, copper, any other material like aluminium, any other metal you may take. And a thin iron, man, uh, what? Manganese spoke of the length ten centimeters. Here it is. Uh, we are taking manganese uh, spoke of ten centimeters length was taken, and a meter was there. The device which used to measure the electrical current strength that is taken here. The key is used to start and stop the flow of current that was taken here, and a voltmeter. Voltmeter. The purpose will be potential different can be measured. potential difference alternatively known as electromotive force that will be calculated by using the device called a voltmeter and led lamps also required uh, in alternative way we are going to perform the same experiment by substituting or by inserting these led lamps so these are the materials which are required for the performance of this lab activity based on ohms law now this is a device setup entire things were connected in such a manner where battery was taken which is the source of the power and through which your electrical current is flowing in this direction and that is connected with a manganese spoke and here voltmeter is connected which used to measure the extent of potential difference generated here a is a meter this used to measure the strength of electrical current and the key is used to switch on and switch off optimization conditions were carried and this is a wire which used to pass the current from one end to any other so this is the entire setup where you are going to measure the current and also here the voltage difference is uh, going to be mentioned so this is the experimental setup so by using this laboratory activity is going to be performed now how can we perform let us see the sequential steps called the procedure Corre uh, connect all the circuit in a, as shown in the figure so we are going to take whatever materials we collected here all are taken and connected in such a manner so that is the device is showing in this figure and uh, solder the conducting wires to the ends of the iron spoke here solder is nothing but so that used to wire the uh, electricity fluctuations if high voltage is generated that solder is used to minimize and that used to stop the current flow that kind of optimization will uh, done by solder 
which having easy melting point conditions and uh, close the key so our uh, key was taken which used to start and stop this uh, entire device and uh, note the readings of current from a meter so here uh, the strength of current measured by the device is called a meter and the potential difference can be monitored by the device called a voltmeter so here two different uh, uh, what uh, diagnosing uh, instruments we are identifying here one is ammeter second is voltmeter ammeter to measure the strength of the current in amperes and voltmeter used to measure the potential difference in the voltage form now so after connecting all these we are going to measure that uh, potential difference and also current because two devices are there one is ammeter and second voltmeter these two are used to give the various values by changing the different conditions so in different serial numbers these are the uh, parameters we collected when we are taking this v by i ratio so here uh, v denotes what potential difference and i is nothing but electrical current strength if you are taking ratio of all these and uh, for various uh, parameters and a various kind of uh, ratio was given so this is the activity we performed in this experiment now connect two cells instead of one cell in the circuit what we are doing earlier we taken only one battery consisting one cell single cell was taken now same experiment is going to be repeated by replacing that single cell with the two cells and the readings are taken what is the potential difference and also current strength all these are going to be measured and the ratio of these two were taken here and the same will be uh, same will be performed and the table again replaced with this two battery setup and uh, in the similar manner the experiment is extended with the three cells four cells five cells in the same manner and the individual tabular form uh, values also taken record the values of potential difference and the current strength corresponding to each case in the table one for individual setup by taking single double triple and uh, quadrate cells we are going to measure the individual uh, potential difference and also strength of the current and the tabular form was taken individually and the ratio for potential difference versus uh, electrical current strength was taken for each and every time what do you notice in each and every case v by i value remains a constant whether it may be single double triple or quadrate kind of cells were taken in each and every kind of experiment v by i ratio remains a constant this is the final output of ohm's law right ohm's law states that v by i is a always a constant that may be taken with a single double triple or quadrate kind of cells we can write this mathematically in the form of potential difference is directly proportional with the strength of the electrical current potential difference is directly proportional to the strength of electrical current this is a conclusion which made which made by uh, taking this ohm's law right so here one more step we performed how we performed one more step so same experiment is going to be extended with the increasing number of cells in the sequential manner and for each and every case we measured potential difference by using voltmeter and the strength of the current by using ammeter both were monitored and they were taken into the ratio form from this ratio for each and individual experiment it is concluded that always v by i ratio remains a constant for all these experiments now from this experiment we can conclude that the potential difference between the ends of the iron that is the conducting material directly proportional to the current passing through it right potential difference is denoted with v and that is directly proportional to the current passing through the conducting material that simply denoted as v proportional to i so that is clearly explained in detail here potential difference directly proportional to the electrical current so this is the uh, major conclusion which is drawn from this laboratory activity by performing uh, by replacing with the individual cells like one cell two cells three cells four cells five cells like that but v by i ratio remains constant in each and every case right now we are going to take the graphical representation of same kind of experiment draw the graph between potential difference versus strength of the current taken and the different coordinates potential difference was taken in the x coordinate and the 
a strength of the current was taken in the y coordinate here potential difference measured in the volts and uh, current strength in amperes so that here the line is passing through the origin the line is passing through the origin and here the relation will be v is equal to i into r that is denoted as a ohm's law v is equal to i into r this is the ideal condition where potential difference and i were taken as a, a parameters and we are going to plot the graph when we are plotting the graph there is a constant increase in the uh, constant increase in the potential is observed and v is equal to i into r that is denoted as a ohm's law here draw the graph between v and i taking the current along the y axis and the potential difference was taken as a x axis appropriate scale was taken and uh, you will get a straight line graph uh, passing through the origin as shown in the figure and this deduces that the relation v is equal to i into r and uh, v by r remains constant so this is the ideal condition now repeat the process by using led bulb light emitting diode bulb was taken instead of iron spoke iron is working like a conducting material and being it is a solder here that will be replaced with led that is a illuminating bulb so same experiment is going to be repeated this is another way of doing this laboratory activity a long terminal of led is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the short terminal of the led is connected to the negative terminal of the battery so in this manner we are going to connect both the ends with this battery and both are connected with the electrical current note that the values of current i and the potential difference v in each case record the values and tabulate in the table number 1 draw this table in your book find out v by i ratio just like uh, how we drawn for uh, iron spoke and uh, similar manner when it is replaced with led bulb and the same uh, the strength of the current with a meter and the potential difference with the voltmeter were measured and the ratio of v by i was tabulated in the table 1 again you will notice that the ratio of v by i is not constant uh, this is a contradictory statement with respect to the first one when we are performing with that iron spoke what happens v by i ratio became constant but when that iron were replaced with this led bulb what happens we got a contradiction with the above statement that is r is equal to v by i is not a constant so in this case it is not obeying the ohm's law uh, ohm's law will not be obeyed for this kind of situation draw the graph between the a potential difference v taken on the x axis and i taken on the y axis this is the second condition what we performed just now this is for led bulb you will uh, get a curvature graph as shown in the figure 12 uh, instead of the straight line just obtained for the iron spoke here we got the curvature in this manner so such a curvature is obtained this is called as deviation from the ohm's law because it is not obeying v by i is equal to constant so that we can say it is the deviation from ohm's law right now from the able lab activity we can conclude that the ratio between potential difference and the strength of current v and i is a constant for some extent of material some sort of materials at constant temperature in fact we established the german physicist georgian simon ohm and it is popularly known as ohm's law here for certain material the ratio of potential difference and the strength of current was taken as a constant at a constant temperature this is the scientific perception which is given by the george simon ohm that's the reason why that law is named after his name called ohm's law here george simon ohm according to him i is equal to v by r we may take r is equal to r is equal to v by i so that is known as ohm's law now we can define ohm's law as follows so after getting the entire uh, detailed uh, laboratory activity so finally we got a conclusion so what is that the potential difference between the ends of conductor is directly proportional to the current v is directly proportional to i and passing through the con uh, con passing through the material at constant temperature ohm's law is given as i is equal to v by r electrical current is equal to voltage by resistance this is a popularly known as 
ohms law now we have a, a entire derivation step by step derivation of the scientific equation let v will be the potential difference between the ends of the conductor i will be the current strength which is passing through the conducting material as uh, given by this ohms law v is directly proportional to i when the temperature kept as a constant throughout the experiment temperature remains constant here now in this condition the ratio of potential difference by strength of the current is equal to constant v by i is equal to constant this already we got from the above equation this constant is called a resistance here the constant term now it is called a resistance it is denoted by capital r then the v by i is equal to r v is equal to i into r v is equal to i into r is known as ohm's law for this uh, v is equal to i i into r si units are denoted as ohm here uh, resistance always measured in ohms the symbol for ohm is taken as like this symbol for ohm is taken as like this one ohm is equal to one volt per ampere how it will be r is equal to v by i right so here 1r is equal to 1 volt by 1 electrical current strength Cur electrical current strength is ampere right that's why 1 ohm is equal to 1 volt by 1 ampere so 1 ohm is equal to 1 volt by 1 ampere so this is the entire derivation for this ohm's law v is equal to i into r now we got the question from this activity can you guess the reason why the ratio of potential difference and the strength of current in case of uh, led bulb is not constant what could be the reason for this kind of deviation from the ohms law i collected this answer from brainly thank you very much for your uh, information as per the ohms law voltage by current is taken as a constant value which is denoted as a resistance so when the resistance changes ratio of voltage across the resistor the current passing through will not be constant if resistance is not a constant then what happens v by i ratio also varied that's the reason why it will not remains in the constant form here the a new term came into the picture called a resistance resistance change will matters for this led bulb experiment we got v by i ratio is not a constant because of change in the resistance value it should be constant it is not uh, remaining constant that's a, because of its variation v by i ratio is not uh, kept as a constant value right so this is the proper answer for the question which is posed here now do all the materials obey ohms law all the materials whatever present in the universe comes in ohms law ohms law or not absolutely no because all the materials are not ideal and they are not obeying this ohms law any material or component or device that obey the ohms law and where the current through the device is proportional to the voltage applied v is directly proportional to i the materials if uh, uh, which obeying this v is proportional to i the materials are denoted as ohmic materials those are obeying the ohms law and those are in the boundaries of ohms law and those are also alternatively known as ohmic components they are called as ohmic components any material or component that doesn't obey the ohms law are uh, regarded as a non ohmic materials or non ohmic components right do all the materials obey the ohms law no the materials obeying the ohms law are called ohmic materials which are emitting which are emitting that uh, law are called non ohmic materials right so this is a proper answer for the question can we classify the materials based on ohms law absolutely yes we can classify and a suitable examples also provided here many substances for which ohms law holds good they are called ohmic materials are ohmic components they includes good conductors like a copper aluminum and the some poor conductors like a uh, materials which are showing some extent of resistance so they are also obeying this ohms law ohmic materials have the resistance that is independent of voltage and current and always v by i ratio taken as a constant and that is denoted as r 
and uh, here the uh, suitable are uh, related materials are copper and aluminium which purely obeying this ohms law now can we classify the materials according to ohms law right so just now we uh, saw that absolutely yes here based on ohms law the good conductors like a copper and aluminium taken as a ohmic materials in the similar manner some other materials uh, which are called non ohmic materials uh, for example led non ohmic material so led bulb is the simplest example which is not obeying or uh, which is not obeying ohms law hence we can say that is a non ohmic material so based on the ohms law we can categorize all the materials into two categories one is ohmic material second is non ohmic material ohmic material as a purely conducting material where b is proportional to i and uh, copper aluminum are the simplest examples rather ohms law which is not obeyed by any substances called non ohmic materials where leds are the simplest examples where the passage of uh, so where the obey of ohms law is not possible these are called a non ohmic materials now in either question is given here can we classify the materials based on ohms law examples for non ohmic materials are diodes here uh, the diagram for diode is given uh, for you so diode electrical diode is provided and the semiconducting materials like uh, silicon germanium and either blended materials which are the most important components of electrical guard gates and also solar cells photovoltaic cells all these are uh, equipped by the semiconductor conducting materials and electrolytes electrolytes are nothing but any uh, ionic species which able to carry the current through them uh, when uh, they are kept in the external electrical circuit those are called electrolytes even in our body also so many electrolytes are present like sodium potassium calcium uh, magnesium so all these are uh, simple examples for electrolytes which present in the human organic uh, organisms Th thyristors so here is the thyristor materials which are provided are related with the electronic systems and uh, transistors here the electronic transistors are also provided a uh, filament bulbs also simplest examples which are not obeying this ohms law and all these are the category under non ohmic materials now here till now we discussed about what is meant by ohms law how can we perform the experiment based on ohms law and what could be the sequential derivation of ohms law and what are the unit of expression for the ohms law and how can we categorize all the materials based on ohms law now we entered into what are the limitations obstacles with this ohms law ohms law is valid for the metal conductors provided the temperature and other physical conditions remain constant under a specified conditions then only ohms law is applicable what are the specified conditions that should be the conducting material and the temperature should remains constant other physical condition should kept constant then only the material is purely obeying this ohms law where v is equal to i into r is purely obeyed here when we are taking any metallic material for that metallic conductors it purely obeyed it perfectly amicable now uh the resistance of the material changes with the temperature hence changing the temperature uh, potential difference versus i graph for the conductor will not remains in the linear rather it will be a curvature if the temperature is varied what happens if we are changing temperature so ideal ohms law here uh, straight line originating from the zero point should be taken but when we are changing the temperature there will be a fluctuation in this manner uh, instead of a straight line we are getting a curvature here this is the limitation of ohms law by changing temperature the material will not obey this ohms law and we are getting some kind of obstacles here and what are the any the uh, limitations of ohms law let us see ohms law is not applicable to gaseous conductors even though conducting materials in the gaseous state they are not obeying ohms law they are purely applicable to metals when it is in solid state regular arrangement is there temperature remains constant then only obeying ohms law but even though it is a conductor but under gaseous state they are not performing ohms law they are not obeying ohms law 
it is not applicable to semiconducting materials as well semiconductors also a very prominent material they are also having a high potential of conduction under certain circumstances but still they are not obeying ohm's law this is another limitation which we are facing here and uh, what uh, new term is uh, introduced here in accordance with the ohm's law v is equal to v is equal to i into r then v by i ratio is taken as r r is called a resistance now we have to define what is meant by this resistance resistance is the measure of opposition to the current flow in an electrical circuit resistance is measured in ohms symbolized by the greek letter omega this is omega all materials resist current flow at certain degree here see our extent of current conduction of any material mainly depends upon the extent of opposing power right so whenever our any material is obeying or allowing to pass the current from one region to another region that is called its conductance at the same same time some extent of opposite force will be there which used to stop the conduction that opposing force which present in the material is called resistance that is given by the symbol called omega and this is uh, mentioned or measured in ohms for any material we are not supposed to calculate direct conductance rather we can measure its resistance based on its resistance we can measure its conductance how can we resist uh, sorry conductance is the reciprocal of resistance r is equal to 1 by c so base if you find if you find the resistance then it it can be converted into 1 by uh one by r value can be taken that will become conductance in that manner always conductance is measured from this resistance only resistance is denoted as the extent of opposition which is generated within the material in order to stop the flow of current through them some extent of force will be there that depends upon the type of material we are choosing if metal was taken the extent of resistance is low that's why they are freely passing current from one region to another whereas we are taking wood in that wood uh, passage of current is not possible because most of the forces are resistance forces rather than conductance forces so that it will stop the passage of current it will not allow to move the electron from one into another that's the reason why uh, wood is the best insulator where resistance is 100% conduction is 0% it is mentioned with the term called omega and uh, this is the term and uh, units of uh, resistance are ohms so these are the resistance materials which can be applied in the electrical circuits now we have the question here is the value of resistance is same for all the materials all are having same extent of resistance or it will be varied for different materials i collected this answer from brainly thank you very much for your valuable information absolutely no all the materials are not having equal extent of resistance what could be the reason for that it differs from one object to another as they are made up of different materials like silver is the highest conducting material in the entire periodic table and the next followed element will be copper uh, when we go when we go with any other plastic material or wood material or rubber so or glass material uh, there is no any zero extent of current conduction will be there that's the reason why here conductance so based on this uh, conductance and resistance we can classify we can categorize all the materials into four categories 100% conductance is there those are called superconductors mercury at uh, minus 200 degree centigrade around that will become a superconducting material 100% conductance will be there if you are passing 100 volts of current it will give 100 volts of current at the end if you are taking copper wire around 80 percentage of conductance is possible a maximum extent of conduction with all the metals are possible when you go with semiconducting material they they are able to uh, pass current in the certain extent partial conduction around 40 to 50 percent conduction will be possible with a semiconducting material if you go with plastic 0 percent conductance and 100 percent resistance is possible that's the reason why all materials are not having equal extent of resistance rather it depends upon the nature of materials by which it is made if resistance is maximum conduction will be least there is a reciprocal between conductance and resistance of the materials that purely depends upon the nature of the materials made up of right now when the conductor is connected with the battery free 
electron start moving and the drift speed in the specified direction so here conductor is the material which used to pass the current only that will not change that will not uh, giving or seeking electrons only it used to transport the electrons from one into any other battery is the source of power where current generation is possible at the expense of chemical reaction and the electrons which are flowing with the drift speed in a particular direction in the specified direction they are flowing in which direction high potential to low potential direction the flow of electrons are possible during the motion electrons collide with the positive ions whatever positive ions are present for example if you are taking copper wire so that that copper uh, will collide with the electrons in the fixed uh, regions which are present in the lattice points this means that they lose mechanical energy when collisions are possible they are losing some extent of their energy mechanical energy loss is possible in the form of heat due to the electrical field that uh, was set up by the battery throughout the conductor these electrons regain the energy so when battery is connected continuous electricity or continuous energy supply is possible by the battery so that again electrons will recharge they will gain the energy from that battery and proceed to move they are moving in particular direction again the motion of the electron is obstructed by the lattice ions when they are moving positive ions used to stop them used to uh, 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 used to disturb them from moving and the battery is supporting battery is uh, supplying the electricity in order to move them so in that manner conduction of current is possible the abstraction afforded to the flow of electrons in the conductor by lattice ions depends upon the nature of materials if the material is maximum opposing that will become a insulator if the material lattice uh, positive charges are opposing certain extent that will become a conductor so that's the reason why here are so many uh, kind of features are op operating in order to conduct the current and in order to specify the resistance of individual materials now therefore the resistance of the conductor is defined as abstraction to the motion of electrons in the conductor uh which used to abstract which used to diffract that electron from its motion electron having strong tendency to move from one into any other in the specified direction so that current passage is possible at the same time certain forces are operating which used to stop the direction of moment that force of stopping force of abstraction is denoted as a resistance the material which offers the resistance to the motion is called a resistor if you are taking positive ions in the lattice these are said to be a resistor so here resistor used to offer the resistance so that motion of electrons will be stopped at that extent so this is a kind of there is a, a certain a uh, slight barrier between the resistor and the resistance resistor is the material to offer the resistance so that is the slight difference by this we completed ohm's law uh, how the ohm's law is derived what is the meaning of ohm's law and uh, how can we apply this ohm's law all these got uh, discussed in this session and uh, uh, sorry and uh, we have a uh, life application of ohm's law to our everyday life is there any application of ohm's law in daily life we have to discuss this one later we are going to conclude this session by shifting the regulator to and from we can regulate the speed of fan at our houses right so if we are switching on the fan what happens that speed will be controlled by this device called a regulator by using regulator even you can stop the fan and you can take on the first mode second third fourth fifth in this extent speed of fan will be controlled and nowadays uh, in the entire digitalized world even uh, mobile based uh, such a regulation is also possible right so in that manner ohms law used to offer this kind of optimization this is called optimization or uh, controlling the speed of the fan that purely based on the resistance which offered if you are taking on the first one in the first mode what happens resistance will be higher and the speed will be smaller if we move on to second one resistance is somewhat decreased and the speed will be increased so in this manner by uh, decreasing the resistance the speed of fan will be 
increased because the flow of current will be increased in the same manner. So this is the uh, daily life application which extended by this Ohm's law and uh, we completed what is meant by Ohm's law, how it can be derived mathematically and uh, what are the conditions required for Ohm's law, how can we categorize all the materials based on Ohm's law and what are the obstacles for Ohm's law and uh, is all the materials are obeying Ohm's law or not. What are the limitations and uh, finally how can we apply this Ohm's law to our daily life? All these topics are in detail discussed in this session. Hope this session will helpful for your preparation. Thank you very much for your consistent listening. Thank you one and all.